Today in the news, we got some Intel benchmarks and game streaming. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. It looks like unlike Nvidia and AMD, they're going to keep a consistent generation naming scheme. No jumps from 10 to 20 and 16 like the green team or from 500 to 5000 like the red team. Thanks to a 3D Mark TimeSpy benchmark, we now know that their next gen will be dubbed the 11th gen. Not surprisingly. Not just that, but that benchmark is actually pretty impressive and gives us some clues as to how Intel's future Tiger Lake CPUs compare. This Tiger Lake U CPU managed to beat AMD's 4800U in the TimeSpy benchmark. Keep in mind we're talking about the uh, final or combined score here. If we look at the Vega 8 equipped AMD CPU, it scores 1227 points according to this chart by AMD. The XE equipped Core i7 1185 G7 scores 1414 in the same benchmark. This is largely due to Intel's use of the XE architecture for integrated graphics. It's about 24% faster than AMD's Vega 8. So graphics wise, it looks like the XE architecture is paying off. AMD is going to have to bring Navi to integrated graphics as soon as possible if they want to continue to compete in the future. If we look at the CPU scores though, Intel's quad core gets squashed by AMD's 8 core. That makes sense. But if we look a little deeper, it actually scores about half at 2,922 points for Intel and 6,061 for AMD. If we extrapolate here, that means Intel's IPC on Tiger Lake U might be higher than AMD's IPC on Zen 2. The Intel CPU is clocked at 3 GHz turbo, if we believe the benchmark, while AMD's has a turbo clock of 4.2 GHz. It's actually pretty impressive given the clock difference. Now, keep in mind that we're talking about the 15 watt CPU segment here. AMD's insanely powerful 4900H and HS are 35 to 45 watt parts, so they would still keep the top of the line crown, but the most popular segment for laptops resides at 15 watts. So Intel might actually take the crown back in that segment by the end of the year, since Tiger Lake U is slated to release in the second half of this year. It's just a shame that Intel has real trouble with 10 nanometer yields and clock speeds, so much so that Tiger Lake has to be modified and ported back to 14 nanometers on desktop. Moving on, we got Amazon. According to a New York Times report, the company is planning to jump into the game streaming world. The new service, codenamed Project Tempo, was apparently in the works for several months and cost a few hundred million dollars to set up. According to that same report, Amazon had hoped to introduce an early version this year, but that it could slip into 2021 because of the coronavirus. With services like GeForce Now, Project X Cloud, PlayStation Now, and uh, Stadia in that market, I want I wonder what Amazon plans to do to differentiate itself from the pack. There's still a large chunk of the game streaming market uncovered. GeForce Now is probably the most versatile, but with studios pulling out their entire library of games, its usefulness is going down a bit. PlayStation Now, on the other hand, is probably the most robust and complete since it has its own games, but the selection can get boring. And Project X Cloud is still in its test flight preview, so you can't really just join in. Oh, and Stadia but yeah, we don't talk about Stadia here. Uh, and speaking of Amazon, if you were waiting for Prime Day to make some PC part purchases, I have some bad news for you. According to a report from Reuters, the mega sale day will be postponed at least until August. Moving on, we got Microsoft in the news. The company just filed a patent for a foldable device with three screens. Now, this might seem like a no-brainer to you. You get two on the inside and one on the outside. But nope, this patent is actually to fix, or at least mitigate, the issue a foldable device with glass screens would have the hinge. The screen would sit right in the middle on the hinge and could either act as an extension to unify the left and right displays or as a notification bar slash action center when the device is closed. Personally, I've always been fine with a separation between displays. Foldable displays are still so fragile, it just doesn't make sense for the uh, mainstream market in my opinion. All right, that is pretty much it for the news today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.